So here we are again, this time in the studio, actually. The last time we met was in the Olympia Halle. Oh, yes. Over there. And uh, we two morons did the interview. And now you're, you're back again in hell. In the yes. interview hell. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so much for coming here. Thank you for having me. Taking the time talking to us. Of course. About the war that ends all wars. Now, when you, when you finished your last record, was there already in your mind that sort of like, You wouldn't be done with the First World War, thematically? Uh, well, yes and no. Uh, I think there were certain stories, like the story of Harlem Hellfighters and the Christmas Truce, that we felt we were abandoning. Yeah. But especially after us announcing the album and going on tour, the amount of mail we got from fans. Oh, have you heard about this? Or meeting fans, people giving us books yeah. and stuff like that. And it was a total overload of the fan interaction, which is beautiful. And we read all of this like, how did we miss this? <laughs> And that in combination with the pandemic hitting at the same time, us being sent home from the tour, and we think, okay, what are we going to do? Should we start a new album cycle? Which we did in, in any way, but mm. do something totally different. But then we are sort of abandoning the theme of the Great War and moving on. So we thought that all of those three reasons sort of became why we did another one. Because, yeah, we had stuff we forgot or couldn't do because we didn't have the right music stuff we missed stuff that fans showed us and then also like yeah now we can at least do a big world war one tour when we come back you know <laughs> we have to talk about the tour later but uh it's uh you know usually when you when, when we talk about sabaton you talk so much about the topic but you talk i feel and that's just a personal me i think you, you all, always talk a little bit less about the music but this record is full of hits. Thank you. Whatever you, whatever you <laughs> How do you come up with all the music? You know, is the music here before? Is, are the lyrics there before? Do you kind of try to fit them together? Usually it's the together? music first. Sometimes they come together, but nine times out of ten it's the music first. Yeah. And But we have a you know bunch of songs. When we start to see how the songs sound, we start to see where which stories would be fitting to it. How do you, what do you sing when you don't have lyrics? When you compose a song, when you go, oh. Like, oh, this is the chorus, la, la, la. Oh, yeah, yeah. trust me, that's, uh, <clears throat> uh, that's weird. Uh, random, random noises and words. It makes no sense whatsoever. Just cool shit that sounds great. <laughs> But then you actually try to understand what it is, and it's like, oh, horrible. <laughs> it's, but, you know, I, I have to ask you this, and it's, it's a very, very honest and real question. After 20 years plus, how do you, how do you just sort of pump out this music because it's uh, still good quality is still just skyrocketing uh, high thank you i mean have you have you never have like a problem okay, finding new musical ideas they're like oh no we have done this before why, 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 why? that is exactly the biggest problem i think it, it's not only for us i think it was go for anyone who's a songwriter who, who's been writing many songs for many years the Things, some things get harder, some things get easier. As yeah. you said, the idea is harder because I have one way of thinking when writing music. And if I'm making a Sabaton song... Uh, you I, write it on keyboards, yeah, right? Yeah, I started on keyboards. Yeah. And, but I write on guitar and uh, not drums because I suck at drums, but uh, <laughs> the other instruments I can handle, you know? <laughs> so uh, it, it always ends up with me following my own train of thought, maybe worried about copying myself, getting that new yeah. idea that still sounds Sabaton, Because yeah. if I can do whatever I want and it doesn't have to be Sabaton, it's easy, you know. <laughs> But finding something that's Sabaton that I haven't done before, that's really the hardest thing. So sometimes working with other people, like one of the guitarists in the band, mm -hmm. you know, Chris or Tommy, mm -hmm. uh, helps a lot sometimes. Because on the other hand, what's become easier is if I have an idea mm -hmm. that I like, like, wow, this is cool. Making it into Sabaton mm -hmm. is much easier because now I have 20 years of experience in arranging and, you know, getting that stuff done. Is it still hard to, you know, clash with the other band members and go like, well, I got this here, and the others go like, no, we don't like it? You know, it's not a problem at all, actually, because <laughs> we, do not, uh, we don't shy away from conflict. I yeah. mean, no, okay. we don't fight, you know, physically. But me and Chris, we have this thing uh, when we are writing together, that if we can't agree on any of our ideas, like, I think we should do this, and he thinks we should do that, then the rule is we have to write something even better together. <laughs> is that the worst? Yeah, one? so we, uh, trust me, it's a war, but I mean, a friendly war when we're writing songs. We can spend three hours on two notes, like, oh, it should be like that. No, 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 wait, let's move that around. Then we have to move these guys over here, you know? <laughs> That's great. I mean, um, 
The video is out, obviously, uh, pre-Christmas for the Christmas truce. Yes. I've never seen more people with long hair in a First World War movie <laughs> <laughs> well, than in this video. We, we can only take historical accuracy so far, you know. <laughs> I don't think it would be normal for all of these soldiers to have so much beards either, you know. Especially, yeah, I didn't think of that now since you said it. Uh, Chris is playing in the British soldier, mm -hmm. and he would have facial hair. He would have, it was mandatory, all soldiers must have mustaches back then uh, in the Why? British. Why? Don't know. Okay. Ask, ask the British. <laughs> <laughs> But yeah, back in the days, uh, British soldiers had to have mustaches. I mean, in Christmas Rus, you're telling a story. Yeah. Still, this looks like a Hollywood production. <laughs> you, guys, you guys are taking really, really, I mean, probably a lot of money in, in order to make all those, 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 well, it's not even a video anymore. It's just, you know, but. Uh, uh, Short film almost, yeah. Yeah. Is there, after everything you've done, you know, visually, do you still have an aim to say like, well, this video must be even better than the last stuff? Oh yeah, every time, every song we do, every show we do, everything we do must be, Better than the last one. Of course, there's going to be a limit soon. Uh, yeah, yeah, but I mean, the thing is, we know it's not going to be possible because everyone's favorite song is going to be different. Yeah. And sometimes we're going to fuck up and fail. <laughs> Sorry for the language, you know. <laughs> but that's okay to not make it all time. But the goal when going into any project, even if it's a video or music, must be to do this as good as possible and make it better than we have before. Otherwise, we might as well pack up and go home. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> that's, that's what I think, at least, you know? <laughs> yeah, okay. Uh, there's, who's the lady of the dark? Uh, Milunka Savic, woman from Serbia. Right, yeah. Well, call <laughs> up. Yeah, well. I would I rec highly recommend uh, anyone listening to this, and if it's before the album release, to Google her, and you'll find some magic stories about a crazy woman. And it's... Uh, say this name slowly again. Milunka Savic. Ah, good. S-A-V-I-C. Okay. In the end. It's a... Uh, Fantastic story, and the, the thing is, it's not fantastic because she's a woman. That story would have been fantastic even if a man did it, it doesn't matter, you know? Okay. The thing that she's a woman makes it even more exciting, I guess, and fun, that you know nobody would expect that. F taking her brother's place in war, the shit, she was better than anyone with grenades, you know? <laughs> <laughs> okay. Not what you expect. <laughs> is, uh, uh, is this record, was it on hold? Was it ready for a long time, or you uh, just it was ready for it? a long time, but it was never postponed. You know, okay. We we finished the recording in March of 2020, and then we did some mixing and mastering after that. So it's been by the time it's out uh, on the fourth of March, I guess it's one year since we did the final recordings. But then there's always these things with we wanted it to coincide with our tour the yeah, release, yeah, yeah. so we we never postponed it, but. We sort of felt like it's not like many concerts are happening. We might as well record it now. <laughs> <laughs> How long did it take you to, to from from you know starting to write it and then to finish recording it? Oh, uh, we actually record pretty fast yeah. uh, because we do so much in the pre-production, so it's ready. Yeah. But uh, the writing, I guess, started last spring, spring of uh, 2020. Yeah, and then we recorded early 2021. Okay, but I mean, it's we had other stuff. Uh, happening during that time as well and it wasn't full time songwriting but in general i think between three, three to three to nine three to six months to write most of the music yeah. and uh, doing stuff then add some time for lyrics and uh, research yeah. and then the actual recording is usually done in about effectively two months yeah for for another full time you know songwriting session that's not too bad <laughs> <laughs> well you have you have The record going on, you started your own, oh, well, you have your, a, a special kind of YouTube channel. Yeah. The Sabaton History Channel. Yes, that actually started out only an hour away from here, recorded and uh, done here actually for the first year or a half, year and a half. I didn't know that. No. Where? Uh, Starnberger say. Oh, really? Yeah. Oh, I, okay. The Why production company uh, uh, were down there, Time Ghost. Yeah. And uh, on Lion, I think. Who got the idea to that? I think we've had that idea to do it for 15 years because we thought we didn't want to really make music videos of us playing, you know, because we always thought we should deliver more of our stories. Because, I mean, how much 
story can we tell in three and a half minutes of heavy metal? There's so much more to the event in the battle or the persons we're singing about. Yeah. So we had this dream about doing it, but we never had the possibility, the knowledge or the infrastructure. And then it turns out we got in touch with these people, mm. and some of them had been involved in the another channel on YouTube called The Great War. And they had the historians, the researchers, the script writers. And it turns out then that Indy, the host, who was hosting that channel, is an American who lives in Sweden. Uh, so it's like, aha! And he's a musician himself and a super nice guy. So we thought of, well, we started the channel of, you know, with the goal of making a mini documentary for every Sabaton song. And now we have. Bands make videos with women and alcohol and party and heavy metal. Yeah, you know? but that's that's been done already and it's getting uh, <laughs> it's getting a little bit boring, wouldn't, it, wouldn't you say? I also think there are so many fantastic things that happen in history that are being forgotten. Gotten. So why make up new shit, you know? <laughs> well, not only do you have your YouTube friends. I just got this in the mail. Aha, camouflage. Have you seen it? Yes. Okay, you're in there. I know. <laughs> <laughs> How, who got the idea to this one? Your own fan sign? Yes, uh, it was Par, a bass player, uh, mastermind of the dark arts. Uh, <laughs> 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 no, but it was like a thing where we think that it's sad that the physical thing is disappearing. Uh, yeah. I understand, I mean... The digital thing because I love it myself. I mean, for example, I don't bring CDs with me on tour, of course. Yeah. Uh, I'm streaming music. Yeah. I love the whole concept, but I don't think you have to choose. That's the problem when people say, I want it digital or I want it analog or I want it physical or it doesn't matter. Why does, why does everything have to be either or? And mm. I, I really miss that thing of reading magazines in that sense. So we thought. Also, when doing interviews or talking about uh, stuff and albums, there's always a certain time limit and there are always things that never get spoken of that we then, not necessarily because we want to say it, but fans are asking us. So that's a way where we can include those kinds of thoughts, questions and answers, mm. the stuff that we've met fans asking because we never talk about those in other interviews, for example. Well, your time is over now. You have to leave now. Yep. I'm sorry. Bye-bye. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's great. So you have everything going on. And then, obviously, like you said before, everything with the new approach and with new music and a new record has to be bigger, better, brighter, whatever. We have to try, at least, that's what I'm saying. <laughs> If well, it is better or bigger, that's up to the listener. You know? start, starting with the record, uh, when it's going to be released in March, and we have uh, one lady from the record company, a record company who is actually famous for putting out very different types of, uh, of things from one product. Yeah. Uh, which formats can we expect for the war to end all wars? All of Is them. there going to be a tank with it and uh, 48 uh, the, different the, vinyl versions? There will versions. be special exclusive boxes. There will, of course, be different vinyls and everything. Yeah. If we can get them out on time, because there's a shortage on uh, the material right. and exactly. the pressing plants, everything is delayed. Yeah. So I, I'll have to ask our lovely fans to have, sometimes be patient with the vinyl thing. It's out of our hands and it's actually... In this case, nobody's fault. It's just the way things are. We have to learn to live with it. But uh, the thing is, we found out that in a way, some people are angry that there are a lot of different stuff. Yeah. They, they cannot yeah. afford everything. Yeah. And However, the other side of the coin is, we have seen that who says you have to own everything? Because people want different things. And that's something people forget. And I don't think we should, we shouldn't force people how to listen to our music. Mm. We can force them to listen to it. <laughs> no, but uh, why is it up to us or up to the record label to decide which format or which box or how we should package or deliver the music to the fans? If they only want streaming, that's fine. Mm -hmm. If they want a vinyl, why should we say, no, vinyl is dead, you know, get, get with the new program? Yeah. So in a sense, without... I mean, if you're a completist collector... I'm sorry, <laughs> but everybody else is a winner here. <laughs> yeah, it's funny, a couple of weeks ago, I talked to Rock and Roll from Running Wild. Yeah. And he goes like, I don't care how, what, what color my vinyl is going to be. I take every color because there's, there's no vinyl, you know, grain, whatever, whatever it's called. Yeah. So he goes like, they can put it all together and make it, make it just motley and, and colorful. I don't yeah, care, yeah. you know, <laughs> as long as it's there. So there's really a shortage of, of, of the stuff. Yeah, yeah. It's very crazy, it's crazy, crazy, crazy. Yeah, lead times are also sick for new releases we're talking six to eight months now 
Yeah, and yeah. if it's a re-release, it's going further down the priority line. Then we're talking a year right. of waiting if you're re-releasing something. Yeah. All right. Huh. Well, well, that's one thing. And now we're talking show. Mm -hmm. You know, the bigger, the better. The, mm -hmm. I don't, I don't even know what you guys gonna come up with. I mean, everybody expects so much from Yeah, yeah, yeah. it does. I mean, that's the trick. It's getting more and more expensive to yeah. go on tour, for sure, you know. <laughs> but to be honest, also, look at it this way. Um, Sabaton has never been a less is more band, you know. <laughs> Listen to our music. Yeah. Everything we do is more is more. It's totally over the top. And, and that's fine. I, uh, I, the only thing we have, uh, as you said, how do we take it further? At some point, we can't, we can't even go... Yeah, we can take larger explosions sometimes, but where is the sound limit? When are people gonna lose their hearing? You know, mm. and other things to consider. Uh, stage height, how how much fire can we do without going open air? You know. Yeah. Uh, but there are also other things you can do, clever things that makes a wow experience that doesn't necessarily have to be a bigger explosion or bigger. Okay. So you're not giving anything away at to this point how the show is going to be looking it'll like. Be, it'll be about war. I'll tell you that. <laughs> <laughs> oh no! Yes. <laughs> you have two very interesting special guests with you along on tour, the Who and Lordy. Yes. And I was kind of surprised that Lordy would be the sort of opening band. So were we, but the thing is, ah. they're like, they're like really a decently large sized band in some countries in other countries even though they're kind of famous yeah. they don't really pull that many crowds mm -hmm. uh, or large crowds but if they do Czech Republic they're doing great they do 3,000 on their own mm. uh, but in other places it's like yeah not too many people unfortunately come to their shows and they were kind enough to bring us on tour in 2006 when they had the Eurovision thing we supported them for like three years Three shows in Sweden, I think. Man, right. Okay, okay. Yeah. And uh, The Who is so something completely different. <laughs> because nobody knows how big they are. Because one, they're not a metal band, but they're big in the metal community. And number two, their last European tour, which was a while ago, and they've gotten bigger since. Every venue sold out. Yeah. So everybody knows they're at least this big. How big they are? Are they bigger than us? I don't know. <laughs> we'll, we'll find out. <laughs> <laughs> the Who's a funny bunch. They were here too, right? It was really funny. They don't really talk much English. Yeah, don't really talk oh, much. yeah. <laughs> kind of hard, but they're nice people. We met them in Kentucky just a few uh, <laughs> weeks ago. Right. And most of, most of the talking was done by the tour manager. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, exactly, exactly, yeah. exactly. Well, you played, you played shows in the US already. Yeah. How was that? It was great. Uh, absolutely amazing, actually. Uh, I enjoyed yeah. it. We were touring with Judas Priest and supposed to be there from early September until early November. Yeah. But then, actually, the same day we met The Who, when Jud Judas Priest came off stage on this festival, it was us, Judas Priest, Metallica, and a bunch more. Pretty large festival. <laughs> yeah. And uh, after the show... Richie from, uh, from Judas Priest came off stage and people asked him, hey, what's wrong, Richie? I don't know, I feel like shit. They took him to hospital. Yeah, and uh, we, we thought more, nothing more of it and neither did their crew. So we had, a, you know, we had two days off after that because we were going to Denver from Kentucky, mm -hmm. pretty far travel. So we were partying, you know, okay. You know, we didn't think more of it. And yeah. then the next day we heard he had, had open heart surgery, you know, 10 and a half hours. Yeah, yeah. And yeah. Uh, of course, tour tour is cancelled yeah, and uh, yeah. we're going home which was really sad because we were having a great time to be back on road again yeah, yeah i can imagine are you going to be back in the states because i think touring germany is a very bad place right now in order to bring on a tour yeah somehow in other countries it looks differently yeah i mean every one thing we've learned here is what all all countries hand, handle this differently yeah. very differently yeah. uh, america it worked fine i mean both from the audience perspective i would say and the touring side perspective yeah after every we did usually do one or two but judas priest did usually two shows after each other yeah and after then we had a day off that was the normal thing and every first show after a day off we'd get tested everyone in the touring party yeah before entering the venue The people who came to the shows had to be vaccinated or have a test that's less than 24 hours old mm. or something mm. like that. And uh, pretty much it was very relaxed. I mean, we mm. didn't go everywhere, but we were in like yeah, six or seven, eight states mm -hmm. uh, walking around and uh, was pretty relaxed situation. People were, as soon as you go inside, mask up, uh, regular mask, and then uh, everything else was sort of like normal and open. Mm. It's crazy. It just sort of works. Um uh, Are you 
having or are are you are you kind of uh, afraid in the back of your head and that the tour here might not be happening in March? Nah, I don't think so. <laughs> Good. Uh, I'm not that worried at all. I mean, it, it might. I can't make any promises. You'll have to ask people higher up on the in the German government than I am. <laughs> <laughs> I've, unfortunately, I have not managed to become chancellor yet. Uh, <laughs> but um, it's uh, it's a different situation for every country as well. That's what we're worrying more, I think. Yeah. Because uh, if we're touring America, it's one nation. Okay, different states, different rules in a sense. But it's, we're having a tour in Sweden in January. And mm -hmm. I'm not worried mm -hmm. at all. Mm -hmm. uh, because that's one country, one government has yeah. to get to say. The truck trick for bands today, and this is a real problem, especially now in these times, is that planning a tour, booking a tour, there is no centralized agreement. I'm not saying the European Union should do anything like that. I'm not here to talk politics at yeah, all. Yeah. But the worry for any promoter or band or booking agent is like, yeah, we can book a whole tour and then let's say France and Germany decides to de lock down. That makes the whole tour impossible to do yeah. because then the band would lo be losing money or and everybody would be losing money. And at this time, Trust me, not many booking agents, uh, promoters, and bands can afford to lose any money. No, no, not really. That's true. So that's the worry about doing, well, those who've done tours now and sometimes had to cancel the whole tour. And it, actually, technically, they could have gone to one country, but they couldn't put on the tour yeah. because of yeah, yeah other stuff. All right. There's one thing I got to ask you, and I'm going to out myself as being really dumb, but uh, I, I read the, the, the uh, lineup for uh, the Subatom Fest. And high above there is a band called Raubtier. Yeah. I have no idea who that is. Ah, it's a Swedish band with a German name. <laughs> All right. They sing in Swedish, so it's not like uh, unexpected that you wouldn't know it. I, I think they should be bigger. They used to be bigger in Sweden a couple of years back. I'd say probably eight or ten years ago. Okay. okay. But then they sort of decided to do different things. So the singer there, Hulkov, is the support, the singer of Raubtier, is called, is named Per Hulkov, and he is the support on our Swedish tour, but with his band, Hulkov. So they okay. started to do different things. And, uh, but uh, we decided we wanted that, Raubtier, <laughs> also at our festival. Because they're all friends, and it's an amazingly good band, I think. Okay, okay. Great songs. Okay, I gotta be listening to that. Uh, you, you still learn. Uh, What's going to happen next? I mean, there's a tour, the record's going to come out, everything's going to be fine, but you guys have a five-year plan. Come on. Five? Ten. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yes, we what's, have a, what's, what's there still to achieve for you guys? A lot. A lot. I mean, here's the thing. We, I don't want to, we never measured uh, against other people. Like, yeah, becoming... If we say we are going to become this or that compared to others, mm. that is going to be a finite situation where there would be an end to what we could achieve. However, if our focus is more internal and how can we become better? Mm -hmm. And if we remove the other things from the equations, how can we make better shows? How can we make better music, better lyrics? Uh, how can we improve the fan experience from the door they enter uh, the venue? Mm. Uh, how can we make sure they're not freezing outside? We couldn't change the weather, of course. <laughs> we leave that to the Chinese. Uh, <laughs> but uh, if we focus on those things, we will automatically become bigger and better. Yeah, yeah. all right. So it, 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 thematically, I mean, there's still 150 wars going on nowadays yeah. uh, simultaneously, but uh, uh, which one's going to be next? We don't know yet. We have five ideas for topics for the next coming albums. I think you're going to go back in time. Yes, that could yes. be interesting, actually. Uh, we've been this, we have several ideas that's further back in history. Mm -hmm. We have a few others that's actually more recent, but I'm talking 1900s, uh, mm -hmm. but after World War II. Mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. That could be interesting as well. Mm -hmm. But we don't know yet. and we, the re We're not trying to be secretive, but the reason we are not uh, telling anyone in advance is that sometimes in, in the past we've hinted that we want to do this and then in the end when we started writing the music it turns out the music wasn't fitting that topic so we yeah. changed changed things around and then people get disappointed and that's the last thing we want we want to disappoint mm. we didn't want to disappoint people <laughs> yeah. we want to make people happy <laughs> so we're, we're trying to keep it secret until we know it's actually happening you know because I remember the last stand that yeah. theme we threw away all the research all the topics everything like 
two months before we started the recording of the album. We just like the music. We cannot make we have because we had almost all the music done. Yeah, we cannot make this happen with this theme of the album and these stories. So we had to throw it all away and go and then find last stands that felt like yeah, this is what the music is about. In two months. Yeah, <laughs> that was not fun. <laughs> <laughs> I have no more further questions. All right. I think I'm done. Is there anything I forgot you to ask? Not that I think of. Ah, But good. To be, to, be, to be honest, though, I never know because I don't remember, really. <laughs> <laughs> It's like, did we talk about that? Yes. You know. The last time we talked, there's one, the one last, the very last question. The last time we talked, you fantasized and you had the dream, you know, imagination about doing shows on the battlefield grounds. Mm-hmm. Still up, yes, but it's still a dream, and especially <laughs> especially with the travel restrictions these days, it's going to be hard to do the research and, and front line work. But I mean, it, I, this is not something I'm say, saying going to happen five years from yeah, now or something. Yeah. But it is truly a dream, and we will work to achieve it. Because imagine a tour where, where it's battlegrounds Europe, and we can go to all of these battlefields or historical sites connected to the battlefields. But it takes a lot of work because a lot of these places don't have infrastructure. You need special permits to put on concerts. Yeah, Some of them are, you know, there might be bodies there. Uh, there might be a cemetery close by. There yeah, I wonder several, if there's fireworks that yeah, would be allowed. <laughs> what, what is going to be allowed? But that can be, especially, I mean, in Europe, Uh, considering we've been singing about World War One, World War Two, but also the Swedish Empire, mm -hmm. which would also put a lot of new battlegrounds on on the map. Mm -hmm. You know, we mm -hmm. could even go to Turkey and play. You know, in Gallipoli. <laughs> That's true. We have the the yeah on this upcoming album. We have the Southern Front, Italy as well represented. So there'll be a lot of cool places to put on concerts. <laughs> Only problem in in some cases is how the Oh, sorry for the language. How the hell are we going to have people getting there? You know, some of these places aren't really in the center of a city. Yeah, I don't mind watching a show with, let's say, four or five hundred other people. <laughs> That's <laughs> true. It's pretty comfy, you know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You get enough space, you know. <laughs> well, thank you very much. Thank you. Good luck for the record. It's full of hits. It's almost mainstream. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Heavy metal mainstream. No, 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 not really. And uh, yeah, well, uh, looking forward to the show here in Munich in March. Thank you very much, man. 